Bruno de Sa, you have been awarded Best Young Singer of this year by Opera Awards. My congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm feeling so honored and so happy and glad with this award. Honestly, uh, I was not expecting. <laughs> uh, was For me, it was a huge surprise. I, I remember weeks, months ago when uh, starts to appear all the nominations and I saw some friends of mine in which I had worked together last season receiving their nominations in the, the main category or for productions itself and I, I remember to think about wow this is so nice to be nominated about something that you develop uh, or work in, in, in a season and I remember to to uh, speak to myself like okay maybe next week, next year, or in some years, you also receive your nomination. And that's keeping my mind and my heart. And then suddenly, uh, I just got the information that I was like, I received the award. I was like, what? Really? <laughs> that's a huge surprise. <laughs> so I'm feeling very, very honored about this, this prize. We all agree that you have this possibility of making this very elaborate and very difficult singing so easy and so normal and natural. I'm sure it's still hard work, but do you also enjoy the performance as we do sitting in the auditorium? Yes, I mean, uh, until the last moment, I mean, until the last moment of rehearsals, I'm very focused in the fixed notes or fixed movements or uh, whatever to find the right position for the voice. And so, like very technically, but once uh, the curtain's up and we are already uh, in the performance, then it's some kind of key change. And for me, it's like a, I enjoy, so I have fun being on stage. And honestly, especially this period in which we are not allowed to be on stage, at least for a while, um, of course, uh, was a development process for me to looking for uh, other things, technically, repertory. But the thing that I miss most was especially to be on stage, to have this, uh, connection with the audience and uh, so I, I really enjoy and one thing that I really like I mean not all the time or not in all performance or not in all moments that, that I'm singing but I, I try to establish some connection with the audience so I really like to look to the, 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 the people sitting in their chairs watching us and uh, somehow uh, see the reactions, uh, the surprise face or the not approvement face, doesn't matter, but to kind of establish um, this connection because, well, first of all, I sing for myself because I like to sing, but beyond this, I sing for someone. And these people, it's sitting in front of me, receiving my art, receiving my, my, uh, my, produce which is coming out from me so it's like a, a connection so I really I really uh, have fun on stage but of course until you arrive at this point it's uh, it's hard work for everybody and not just for me as a young singer but for uh, for my colleagues for technicians uh, orchestra everybody it's the whole crew working together in this direction. You sing with your voice, obviously, mainly the Baroque repertoire, early music and contemporary music. What's the difference in the audience reaction? Not so much for you when you're singing, but in the audience reaction. It's, it's interesting because it's, for my perspective, it's two different kinds of audiences. The people who uh, consume Baroque music, they normally, they have their own um, favorite singers and they follow the singers in different productions. 
and they know about the repertory, they know about the story, and they also like to uh, compare one production with the other. So more or less the audience who uh, consume Baroque music, they also uh, follow you wherever you go. So more or less, they know uh, your abilities or what you can do as performer. And of course they expect that on, on, uh, on stage. So they also create a kind of uh, expectation like, okay, we arrived to the point when, when we have the cadenza, what, let's gonna see what he will do with cadenza. Or for example, I had the experience to sing uh, Carlo Il Calvo in Bayreuth, then in uh, Wien, then in Amsterdam. So the same production. And some people was following us in these three different cities. And uh, they, they uh, answered me like, okay, we are waiting for your high D, like this pianissimo, because we, we know that you did. So we are expecting to see how it's gonna sound in this, in this place or in this uh, new atmosphere. And about contemporary, it's also different kind of audience. And sometimes you don't have uh, so uh, famous piece or for example, world premiere. So more or less the audience, uh, they are open for everything. They, they create, of course, some expectation, but it's more, uh, more open for uh, what the composer will propose and what I, I, I will work together on it or, or no, that depends. So I, I feel in these two different reactions, like uh, in, in Baroque, more or less, the audience already expecting something and, uh, and in contemporary, it's, it's more open and they, they create this relation although the, the, the piece is developing. Does that add a certain pressure with the Baroque audience that if, as you said, there are the top notes they are expecting, but I'm not feeling so well tonight. Will it work that, how, how do you deal uh, with that? Definitely, yes, definitely, yes. Uh, I mean, First of all, because uh, most of the time I'm sharing stage with this huge opera stars and specialists in Baroque repertory, which they can do almost whatever they want with their voice. And they love to do this. And this is a kind of a class for me as young singer to listen them so close to share the stage with them. Uh, people who was like my inspiration when I started to study, for example, Franco Fagioli, Filippo Jaruski, Max Emanuel, all of those singers, they were my uh, inspiration in the previous years. And now having the opportunity to share the stage with them, it's something amazing, but also add some responsibility for me because we are a team, we working together. Of course, they are doing their job, I'm doing mine, but we are together uh, looking for one goal that is the, the music and the piece itself. So of course, uh, the people expecting something which is uh, at least in the same uh, level, may I say. It's not, it's not a competition, it's not a comparison, but it's a, a, a product that you must offer. And, uh, and, and then become the challenges, uh, the technical challenges, the coloraturas, the, the, the musicality, the, 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 the right language for the right composer. So each composer, even in Baroque, each composer has their own language and you must to discover um, how to put this in your voice and how to communi communicate this uh, with the others, so it's it's really it's really tricky. Uh, I I told to Franco in this Carlo Calvo production that we work together that the, the first time I never sang uh, Porpora opera. I, I did some concerts singing arias, but never the entire opera. And I told to him that was tricky because when I received the score and I had the first looking 
for the areas and the recipes. And I thought, oh, that's it's easy. It's a einfach music. <laughs> and then when it comes to the point, okay, now I will put in my voice. And uh, I was like, that's not easy at all. That is made to sound easy. But when you go to the point, it requests you a, a, a high level of development in your vocal technique and as an artist and, and so. So, and then comes the pressure. Oh my God, I, I must do this job like uh, as it worthy, you know? So basically, basically, yes. There is this pressure under our shoulders, but it, I think it, the pressure itself doesn't matter the, the, um, the style that we are singing. It's a constantly pressure for any period. If you go to bel canto repertory, uh, there's the pressure. If you go to contemporary, there's also the pressure. So I try to, to, to work with this pressure, like uh, independent in the repertory or independent in what I must to do with my voice or during the production, what I is requesting. The pressure, it will happen anyway. I remember playing last season in Basel, Andersen Erzählungen, which is a contemporary piece. And I was like playing the Little Mermaid, it's kind of the title role. And uh, I had to be hanged 20 meters, uh, 10 meters high in two cables because the mermaids should uh, swim in on stage and they had to hang us. And I remember to almost have a panic attack every time, even after 20 performances and two months of rehearsals, I was like almost paralyzed, like, okay, I, I'm really high. I must to sing and I must to sing very pianist more, very far, doesn't matter, plus, the, the, the pressure that's like in German, it's not my language. Um, uh, sought out almost all performance. So, so I try to put in the pressure box everything, you know, <laughs> because otherwise uh, you can get crazy. Like, okay, it's the pressure of the audience, the pressure of the music, the pressure of the technique, the challenge of the performance. And then, for me, it's, it's it's easy to treat to and put everything in the same box because then more or less I know how to treat it. You mentioned Franco Fagioli, who of course is a superstar in Baroque music and called male coratura singing now. I remember at a very early stage of his career, I talked with the casting director who said, um, I have real difficulties to cast him, to get opera houses um, book him because his voice is so controversial. Um, and many people just don't like the instrument, not necessarily what he does with it, but the instrument. And that, of course, for every singer is a very personal thing because you're, you yourself are your instrument. How do you, well, how do you deal? How do you react to criticism of what you're doing and how you sound, how you act on stage? Because everybody has an opinion and there are so many blogs now writing. And of course, we, the critics write about you. Um, what do you do with all the response you haven't necessarily been asking for? Well, it's, it's interesting because this question I'm reflecting since three weeks ago uh, when uh, someone posted a video of mine in a, in a YouTube community or a Facebook community in Brazil and the people start to criticize myself because I was singing a Contessa. And no, Bruno shouldn't sing this because he's a male, blah, blah, blah. And then I start to reflect about, uh, okay, I know that not everybody will like my job. I know that not everybody will like my voice. And I'm, I'm facing this since the beginning, since, uh, I mean, since I was a teenager, honestly, even before think about singing, because 
when you live in a country uh, where the machism is super strong and where the people are expecting for a man to speak low and uh, sing low and then suddenly you discover yourself like no i i can't sing low i can't speak low and then it starts to face this and uh, i just uh, found like two options or i will give attention to this criticize criticism and uh, try to adapt myself and uh, to please them and then somehow i will miss myself or i just like okay that's your opinion uh i don't care i know who i am and uh, you know kind of uh, run to the not the other direction but uh, okay uh i i will not given you too much attention and i don't care about what you think about me i know what i'm doing i know who i am so this kind of uh, experience i lived even before be a singer professional singer so one comes to the point in in which um, I start to work and got attention for the 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 the, the critics. And uh, I remember once when I sang uh, Clemente de Tito, and the, com the 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 conductor he added some cadences, some uh, ornamentation, and requested me to sing because Clemente has this kind of Baroque uh, influence. Even later, he's from Mozart. And I remember that one of the those critics said, "Okay, he uh, he abused of uh, virtuosistic things and cadenza." It was like, "Yeah, but what is, what is the point?" And then I realized, "Okay, okay, some opinion it's important. I respect your opinion, what you think about, even not agreeing with my job, but I I don't." Uh, I, I cannot please everybody. I cannot uh, make everybody happy. Uh, so that's the point. So I, I know, of course, that sometimes the people uh, don't like my timbre or they do prefer listen me just in one specific repertory, one specific kind of muse. And as, uh, as an artist, I have, of course, I have my own wishes, I have my own desires and one own uh, plans for future. And uh, I think it's so sad when the people try to control the art artistic production of someone. Once we have like the freedom of art. So when you say, it's one thing when you say, I don't like what you do, then I respect. But when it comes to the point, no, I don't like what you do and you shouldn't be doing this because blah, 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 blah. I was like, no, sorry. I am an artist and I like to do this, even if you don't agree. And please, I respect your opinion and I would just request you to respect my own desires. And it, it doesn't mean that I, I, I will not do mistakes in choosing a uh, repertory or uh, stylistic things. No, it's not this, but it's 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 much more about the art itself. So uh, I try to keep my mind about the art that I'm doing, the the music decisions that I'm doing, uh, beyond the fact that please the everybody, you know, and uh, and so I more or less keep my goal. So, okay, I, you don't like that there's nothing that I can do, sorry. <laughs> I like to sing. I like to sing in this way or this music, sorry. There, for, fortunately, we'll have people who will like and who will give all support that we as an artist, we need. So it's a balance. So that's the thing. And if you, if we just pay attention to the critics, critics in a bad way, uh, our mind get crazy and we start to, to feel free to make the art that we want or to, to make the music in a way that we would like to or whatever. That's, that's, 
And I say, and it's interesting because this kind, this question is uh, connect with uh, the repertory choices. Uh, I remember when I was really a beginner, the people really expect me to sing only Baroque. And in Brazil, unfortunately, we don't have a huge number of Baroque productions. So I thought, okay, if I only do this, uh, uh, I cannot pay my, <laughs> my bills. I must discover what my voice allowed me to sing. And it's not a problem for a, a male soprano, which is, a, is also something very new and the, the people really don't know what to expect about a man who sings as soprano. And when I say people, I'm not saying just the audience, but also the people who work with music, conductors itself, uh, uh, casting directors, everybody. It, it's somehow it's something new and rare and not common. So I just look further and saw, okay, what is the kind of music that I can sing that my voice allows me to sing? So I face it like this a uh, high um, metal soprano repertory, which is currently doing all these trouser roles, high ones. And then I start to, to step on this repertory. And uh, I remember that, like, oh no, you cannot, you cannot sing Romeo, for example. You cannot sing Cherubino because Mozart never thought about it. I was like, yeah, but sorry, I don't have this telephone number. And <laughs> you know this kind of this kind of problems and of course still having some uh, um, some conservative people who are still thinking in this way but honestly uh, just an ex as example uh, since I, I I sing Romeo from Bellini it became like one of my favorite uh, areas and famous videos and blah, blah, blah. And after that, invitations to sing this role and, 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 and so. So it's, it's a balance. Some, sometimes you must just to keep feeling and facing your own through what you think that it's good for your voice. 